There's a property of systems that can be our biggest aid in our goal of creating change. Unfortunately, it can also be the biggest threat to our goal of protecting a stable climate. It's called reinforcing feedback. And in this video, I'm going to explain what it is, show you some examples, show you the kinds of behavior reinforcing feedback creates in systems, and give you some tips for recognizing reinforcing feedback when you see it. A system has reinforcing feedback whenever a change in one element of a system feeds back on that same element to produce more change in the same direction. And it turns out the world is full of examples of reinforcing feedback. When money deposited in a bank earns interest, which in turn increases the amount of money in the bank, that's a reinforcing feedback loop. As interest earned increases, money in the bank increases, allowing for even more interest to be earned. In causal diagrams, we sometimes mark reinforcing feedback loops with an R. Natural systems have reinforcing feedback loops too. As population grows, there are more births, increasing the size of the population even more. Reinforcing feedback loops don't always have only two variables. Take a look at this example. Whereas a new technology becomes more common and more familiar, new sales pick up and the technology becomes even more common and even more familiar. As sales of energy efficient vehicles increase, the number of energy efficient vehicles on the road increases and people's familiarity with the technology increases, leading to more new customers, more sales, and an even greater number of more efficient vehicles on the road. Notice how change starting at any one place in the system propagates forward to produce more change in the same direction. An increase in the number of vehicles, for example, sets the stage for an additional increase. The key way to tell if a feedback loop is a reinforcing feedback loop is to start with a change in one variable in the system. Then trace the chain of causation all the way around the feedback loop. If you start with an increase in one variable, work your way around the feedback loop and see an increase in that same variable, then you're looking at a reinforcing feedback loop. If you start with a decrease in one variable, go all the way around the feedback loop and see a decrease in that same variable, then you're also looking at a reinforcing feedback loop. As in all reinforcing feedback loops, an increase in one variable propagates around the feedback loop to cause still more increase. All of the links in a reinforcing feedback loop do not have to be pluses. The only criterion is that change in one part of the feedback loop feeds back to create more change in the same direction. Here's an example of a reinforcing feedback loop that has both pluses and minuses. Investment in energy efficiency reduces spending on energy. Less spending on energy increases profits, leaving more funds available for investment in energy efficiency and even more actual investment in energy efficiency. So the original investment creates the conditions for even more investment in the future. If you think back to the iceberg metaphor, reinforcing feedback is at the level of system structure and it produces a very specific pattern of behavior. Because reinforcing loops create increasing change in the same direction, they can produce over time exponential growth, where the amount of whatever variable is being controlled by the feedback loop begins to grow faster and faster. Because reinforcing feedback produces an amplification of an initial change, it can also produce exponential decay. In our example about investing in energy efficiency, imagine if the business owner decided for a few years not to invest in energy efficiency. With less investment in energy efficiency, there'd be more spending on energy, lower profits, all else being equal, and even less funds available for investment in efficiency in the future. If you see exponential growth or exponential decay in the system that you're working within, then there's reinforcing feedback involved. Reinforcing feedback on its own is neither good nor bad, but it is a force for change. Reinforcing feedback can take systems into new modes of behavior. Sometimes those are changes that we want to see, like exponential growth in the climate movement, or growth in the number of clean energy installations in a region. And sometimes those changes are very dangerous, like exponential growth in greenhouse gas emissions. 
Part of the art of changing systems is learning how to recognize and interact with both types of reinforcing feedback. Learning how to slow the momentum of the dangerous feedback processes that could push our climate system even further out of balance. And learning how to ignite the kind of reinforcing feedback that can spread ideas, that can build movements, that can give rise to our vision of a stable climate and a sustainable and just society.